A mistrial declared in the high-profile rape case involving two former Vanderbilt University football players. After months of investigation, hours of testimony, and even a verdict, those involved in the case are back to square one. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Rory Johnston. Today, Judge Monty Watkins declared a mistrial in the case of Brandon Vandenberg and Corey Beatty, who both were convicted of raping a fellow student. Here's a look at how we got to this point. The incident occurred at an on-campus Vanderbilt dorm back in 2013. Two other former athletes are still awaiting trial. Vandenberg and Beatty were both convicted on multiple charges in January. Defense attorneys for both defendants brought the mistrial motion earlier this year, saying the two didn't receive a fair trial. That's because jury foreman Todd Easter didn't disclose the fact that he had been a victim of statutory rape during jury selection. Easter says he didn't bring it up because he does not consider himself a victim. Still, defense attorneys argued they would not have allowed the 31-year-old to be a juror. In today's ruling, Judge Watkins concluded, quote, the defendants have a right to a fair and impartial trial, a right that was violated by Easter's misconduct. By failing to disclose the named victim in a 23-count statutory indictment, the presumption of jury bias was met. Now that the ruling has been made, Vandenberg and Beatty, whom the jury convicted again of multiple counts of aggravated rape and sexual assault, could be set free. Tomorrow, a hearing is scheduled for both. Their attorneys expected to request their original bonds be reinstated. The DA's office says they will request a new trial date be set as soon as possible. That means evidence and painful testimony could once again be brought to a courtroom. New at 10 tonight, News Channel 5's Emily Luxon spoke with the director of a nonprofit that helps victims of sexual assault about how this ruling could affect the victim in the case going forward, Emily. Well, she says it's certainly a disappointing development. She's worried it could have a devastating effect on this victim, but also future victims who now may be reluctant to come forward. The mistrial decision is so disappointing. When Kathy Walsh heard the latest development in the Vanderbilt rape case, her thoughts immediately centered on the victim. Well, I think it's very traumatizing for victims of sexual assault when they have to go through the trial process. And so when you think about having to relive that again, yet in another trial, because of a technicality, it's unfathomable. As executive director of the Tennessee Coalition to End Domestic and Sexual Violence, Walsh followed the trial carefully as the victim broke her silence about what happened in a Vanderbilt dorm room on June 23rd of 2013. I remember waking up in an unfamiliar room at 8 something the next morning. While the victim was praised for her bravery. She showed tremendous courage in staying with the case and not giving up even though it got continued twice and, and you know, it was delayed numerous times with motions. but. Uh, but I think she now feels it was all worth it, and, and she finally got justice. Walsh fears the now unresolved case will have a big impact. I think it could have a chilling effect for other victims of sexual assault who are considering coming forward. It, it might cause some victims to lose faith in the system. But Walsh hopes even with this latest twist, the victim will ultimately find peace again. I think in this case that this young woman is incredibly strong, and I know she has a lot of supportive people around her, so we will be thinking about her and uh, sending good thoughts her way. Well, she says she encourages victims of sexual assault or domestic violence to reach out for help. She says her nonprofit and countless others offer resources. We have a list of where you can turn on newschannel5.com. Roy, back to you. Emily, thanks. We will be in the courtroom tomorrow for Beatty and Vandenberg's hearing. We'll begin our coverage starting at 8 a.m. on Morning Line over on News Channel 5 Plus. That's when our Nick Barris will join News Channel 5 legal analyst Nick Leonardo to take your calls on this case's new development. Then we'll bring you gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage when the hearing begins around 9 a.m.